Hey, what's up folks, how's it going? This is Watch Hope you guys are all doing well. And these days, it looks like Steam machines and compact gaming PCs are all the rage, especially if you want to bring a computer to the living room for a couch gaming experience. And there's a lot of pre-built systems. We recently did a review on the Alienware Steam machine and there's a whole bunch of different manufacturers making pre-built kind of Steam machines, but there's definitely a lot of weaknesses. Certainly there's hardware limitations. And even if you get some of the ones that are pre-built with high-end hardware, where they are going to cost you a pretty penny so why not build one yourself and this is the exact thing that we're going to do in this video we're going to be doing a very powerful 4k console gaming pc so in this build guide we're going to go through the parts the actual build guide and we're going to benchmark the 4k and 1080p gaming performance to see what this little beast is capable of so if you're interested in this full-on build guide stay tuned and let's find out now the case that I've selected to make this console PC is the Silverstone RVZ02. This is actually a ITX chassis that came out a couple of months ago and it has tons of great features. It can support graphics cards up to 13 inches. It uses of course SFX power supplies and it has lots of great toolless features as well. Now in terms of the PSE we're using the Silverstone 450 watt non-modular SFX power supply. The specific model number is the ST45SF. Now at 450 watts this is going to be perfect for pretty much anything that we're going to throw at it. Now obviously if you're using a very power hungry graphics card you might need to bump up uh, your wattage a little bit but even at overclock speeds both in terms of CPU and GPU we shouldn't have any problems with this PSU. Now the motherboard that we're going to be using comes from Asus. It's a Z17OI Pro ITX board. This supports the new standard for DDR4 memory. It has built in AC Wi-Fi and it supports most of the processors designed for socket 1151 such as the one that we're going to be using which is the core i7 6700k processor which is one of the best hyper threaded quad core chip that you can get and since this is an unlocked cpu we can definitely overclock it a little bit to get a little bit more gaming performance especially ones that utilize a multi-threaded capabilities now the cooler that we're going to be using is from sigma tech but you can use any kind of cooler that you like basically you want to make sure that your cooler is below 65 millimeters in order to, to fit properly into this chassis now in terms of ram we're using 60 gigabytes of memory from uh, Crucial. And for storage, we're going to be using two SSDs from Corsair, the FX LX series, 250 gigabytes each. I have these things uh, lying around and they're actually covered in this cool looking carbon fiber wrap. If you're interested in actually vinyl wrapping some of your equipment, such as your PC case, we have a video on that in the description down below. And lastly, in terms of our graphics card, we're going to be using the Gigabyte G1 GTX 970. This is an excellent graphics card, especially if you want to dominate in a 1080p and quad HD settings and of course it's pretty capable when it comes to 4k resolution as well especially if you dial down some of those detail settings on your games so without any further ado let's actually get into the build guide now the tools and equipment that you're going to need to make everything possible is pretty straightforward phillips head screwdriver and some thermal paste because the cooler does not come with that installed so you definitely want to make sure you have some in handy but that's pretty much it now the first step is going to be to prep our case we're going to remove the uh, side panels of our case exposing all the innards and we're going to install our PSU directly into the case and you can see where the PSU should live it's right adjacent to the motherboard tray once your power supply is into place you can screw it in using the Phillips head screws provided either with the case or with the power supply itself thereafter we're going to plug in the three prong power cable that reroutes the external power connection to the back of the case and we're going to turn on the PSU as well next it's time to install our processor into the motherboard now we're going to basically locate the motherboard socket. We're going to remove the cover, lift up the retention arm, thereby exposing the bare socket, and we're going to take our CPU and align it correctly uh, based on the orientation of the triangle located on the bottom left of the CPU, and make sure the processor is sitting perfectly onto that socket itself. Once that is ensured, go ahead and lock down the retention arm, and you're pretty much done installing the CPU. Next, we're going to take each of our RAM modules and lower it directly into the socket itself. Again, everything should align perfectly based on the proper orientation and we're going to occupy both slots since we only have two slots on this motherboard. Thereafter we can take the motherboard backplate and install it directly onto the back of the case and once that is properly inserted you can now lower down the motherboard directly into the motherboard tray area of your case and everything should align based on the four different screws and you can go ahead and screw everything into place and again those screws should be provided with the case. Once everything 
everything is secure, you're now ready to install the front panel header connectors directly into the motherboard and refer to your motherboard manual for the exact placements for each of your front panel header connections. And once you have your power switch, restart switch, hard drive, activity light, power light all installed, you're now ready to uh, basically plug in the header connection for your headphone jack as well as your USB 3.0. And while we're still in the mood for plugging stuff in, we're going to plug in our 24 pin main motherboard power connection as well as the 8 pin power for our CPU. Okay, so now it's time to install our CPU cooler. Firstly, you want to prep and install the Intel bracket directly onto the back of the cooler itself. You want to then remove the plastic film that's on the surface of the cooler and apply some thermal compound on the processor itself. And then you can lower down the cooler directly onto the CPU socket, making sure that all four screws are poking out at the back of the case. You can go ahead and secure the cooler onto the PCB using the nuts provided with the cooler. Once everything is properly screwed down, you can go ahead and connect the power for the CPU fan directly onto the motherboard. Now it's time to install our GPU. Now before we can actually install the actual graphics card, we're going to need to redirect the PCI Express connection to the other side of the case and we're going to first use this L-shaped PCI Express adapter supplied with the case and we're going to basically connect that directly onto the PCI connection on the motherboard. On the flip side, we're going to secure that adapter directly into the case using some Phillips head screws. Next, we're going to extend the PCI connection using this uh, PCI Express riser adapter that again came with the case and it's as simple as just placing it down and we're going to remove the PCI Express uh, covers on the case and now we're finally ready to install our GPU directly onto that PCI Express connector and once you have made even contact you can secure the GPU directly into place. After that we can simply connect the power connectors from the PSU to our graphics card and last but not least our final step is to take uh, both of our SSDs insert them directly into the drive cradles of the case and connect all the necessary cables such as your data connection from your motherboard via the SATA cables and your power connections. And after that, congratulations, you're pretty much done. You have now completed this ultimate gaming PC console. Now, the way that I configured this machine is I put both SSDs in RAID 0 configuration for maximum performance. I've installed Windows 10 as our primary operating system. And I've also configured this machine to boot directly into big picture mode at initial boot up. So basically, when you turn this thing on, it's going to boot directly into big picture mode, much like any kind of Steam machine would. But of course, over here, we can actually play all those games since it's running a proper Windows operating system. It's not limited to just Linux based or Steam OS games. And in terms of the overclocking settings, as we mentioned before, the Core i7-6700K is very easy to overclock, but I don't want to push it too far because our cooler is not that capable compared to a proper desktop water cooling configuration. So it's uh, set to a very conservative 4.5 gigahertz, which is pretty good compared to the stock frequencies. Additionally, in terms of our GPU, we have achieved a 15% overclock above the factory overclock settings so your core clock is set to over 1300 megahertz and uh, over 1500 megahertz on the boost clock additionally the memory clock is clocked at 8000 megahertz Okay, so now with all that done, let's finally get into our gaming benchmark results. We're going to take a look at a couple of different titles at a 1920 by 1080 and 3840 by 2160. So you have a good idea in terms of how it does at full HD and at 4K. And obviously we're going to kind of play around with the detail settings so we can get the most kind of playable experience possible on both of those uh, settings. So here we go. Let's find out how this thing does.
But other than that, guys, that's really it. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, definitely give us a thumbs up and check out the description down below for all the parts that we use uh, to make this little compact gaming PC for the living room. If you go through any of our Amazon links when getting anything, it gives a, a little bit of kickback. Doesn't cost you anything extra, but it, importantly, it makes videos like this possible in the first place. We really thank everyone that goes through our links on a regular basis and bookmarks them. It, again, uh, supports us greatly and um, uh, motivates us to make more videos like this. So thank you again for watching. Thanks for your support. We'll see you later. Take care.